In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of Nuke's preferences and show you where you can use negative numbers to allocate more resources for Nuke. Although we will be in the preferences window, we will not cover all of the options in detail. The preferences window shown in this video is from Nuke Studio, but will still include some preferences that are applicable to Nuke X, Nuke, and Hero. Should you require more information than what is covered here, then please refer to the user manual that can be found online or hover your cursor over an option for tooltip information. Start with opening up preferences by pressing Shift S on the keyboard. We'll start at the top and work our way down. Under the general settings, you can find a very useful option called Path Substitutions. Path Substitutions allow you to remap file paths in order to easily share projects across different operating systems. As an example, one read node is mapped using a Windows file path structure, as we can see by selecting the node and pressing Q on the keyboard. The other read node is mapped using either Mac OS or Linux file path structure, as we can see here. While it's easy enough to change the drive location for these two nodes through the file path name, imagine if you had to remap the drive for a script with multiple read nodes. You could even stay within Nuke to use the search and replace function by pressing the control shift question mark to search through all the selected nodes and replace the C drive with volume slash network mount. Both of those methods work great if you need to find and replace information. But in this example, if we are going back and forth from different operating systems, then you don't want to have to keep remapping drives through search and replace. This is what makes path substitution so useful inside of Nuke. Now your assets in your script will link up regardless of which operating system they were originally pathed to. In the performance section under caching, you'll want to make sure your temp directory is set to the fastest accessed local drive for the best playback performance. Limit to GB. This allows you to set the maximum amount of space in gigabytes to use for the timeline disk cache. Set this to zero for no limits on your available disk space. Setting the values lower than zero will leave you that amount of disk space free for system functions outside of Nuke. Clear all removes all cache files from the read directory specified in the directory path control. A dialog window displays a list of files for confirmation before the files are deleted. Temp directory. The comp disk cache saves all recent images displayed in the viewer for fast playback. Select a local disk, preferably with the fastest access time. Setting the comp disk cache size is the maximum amount of disk space that Nuke can allocate for caching. This is independent of the playback cache, and setting this control to zero also disables Nuke's RAM cache, as both caches rely on files written to disk. If you do a lot of paint work, then setting the roto paint cache size helps ensure you won't run out of roto paint disk cache. When you run out of RotoPaint disk cache, you'll notice that your painting response starts to slow down if there are a lot of strokes. One thing to note about playback cache size is that it's measured in the percentage of system RAM. The entire amount of RAM is allocated, even if you only have a few frames in the viewer cached. The comp cache size specifies the percentage of system memory available for comp caching. When this limit is reached, Nuke attempts to free memory before using any more. This may be why your comp script might hang for a moment before you can do anything. The comp playback cache size specifies the percentage of comp cache available for comp playback. This cache holds data displayed in new compositing viewer. Jumping down to undo caching, here the undo history size is the amount set in megabytes. If this amount is exceeded, then older history states will be deleted. The minimum undo events will override the undo history size, allowing you X number of undos, regardless of whether they exceeded the amount set in the undo history size. There are a couple settings in localization that should be considered. The first setting being the localized to folder path that should be pointed to the fastest local disk you have available for best performance. The next setting being the storage amount. By default, the storage limit is set to a dedicated amount of 10 gigabytes for localized assets. Another option you can choose is to set a negative number. The negative number indicates that you want to use all of the unused disk storage available with the exception of the negative number you left for all other system processes, excluding new. So negative 10 would mean 10 gigabytes of disk space are available for all other system functions, while the remainder of the unused disk space is dedicated strictly to Nuke localization storage. Threads and processes allow you to tweak the performance of Nuke based on your machine capabilities. Pay no attention to my settings as I have found through trial and error that these are the most optimal for my machine and the type of work being done on this machine. Default number of threads per reader. This sets the number of threads to use per reader. If your source files are located on high performance local drives, Increasing the number of threads can significantly improve read times. CPU intensive operations, such as JPEG decoding, can also be improved by increasing the number of threads per reader. Override number of threads per reader. This allows you to 
override the default number of decode threads used depending on the type of file format. Use the plus button to add an entry to the table and then select the file format using the drop down menu. Double click the number of threads column to set the required number of decode threads for that format. Open EXR and RE helper threads to use. This sets the number of helper threads to use. The default zero automatically sets the number of helper threads. QuickTime decoders to use. This sets the number of background processes available to handle QuickTime file I.O. Note that using too many decoders can affect performance, depending on the available hardware, and you must restart Nuke for this setting to take effect. Frame Server Render Timeout. This allows you to increase the number of minutes a render process can stay unresponsive before ending. If you're experiencing render application timed out messages with process-heavy scripts, you can try increasing this value. Frame Server Processes to Run. Set the number of slave Nuke processes to run for the frame server. Note you must restart Nuke for this setting to take effect. The number of threads sets the number of threads that Nuke uses when transcoding. Lower numbers allow the timeline environment's interface to be more responsive. Higher numbers allow faster transcodes. Use this to set the number of gigabytes of RAM that Nuke uses for its cache settings. Lower numbers may improve the timeline environment's interface responsiveness, while higher numbers may improve the speed of the transcodes. Under Tab Search menu, Waiting, when enabled, nodes in the tab menu are weighted so that more commonly used nodes appear at the top of the list. Favorites, when enabled, nodes that you have marked as favorite in the tab menu appear at the top of the list. Your weighted and favorited nodes can be retained even when disabled. If you want to clear those nodes, then choose Clear Waiting and or Clear Favoriting. The rest of the preferences pretty much set the look and behavior of the UI.